If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this extra special episode of Mind Pump, mm-hmm. look for 53 minutes. Uh, we do our introductory fun talk portion portion of the episode. I changed it. See, I didn't say introductory. Portion. You like that? Yeah. Uh, so here's what we start out by talking about uh, for the first 53 minutes. We start out by talking about songs from the 80s, uh, some of our favorite songs that uh, Adam has got stuck in our heads now. <laughs> yeah, I, thanks, man. I talk about the Bernie Sanders beer special uh, and the coming election. You like that part. We talked about Zion Williamson's exploding shoes yeah. Apparently, this guy's so big and so fast that his shoes could not contain him. They can't keep up. That's crazy. Then we talked about Katrina drinking all of the smoothie box drinks that uh, Adam had bought for both of them. <laughs> uh, smoothie box makes amazing, organic, pesticide-free smoothies that you make at home. These are actual frozen chunks of food that you just blend. It's all comes together, measured out for you. And we got you guys an awesome offer. If you go to smoothie box dot com forward slash mind pump smoothie is spelled s m o o t h i e and then box b o x dot com forward slash mind pump you'll get twenty dollars off your first three boxes then we talked about adam's new hobby he started swimming what and then hear about the person he challenged to, to a swimming competition <laughs> this is where it gets spicy bring it motherfucker he might have, he might he, i think he was hyper and lost his mind in this podcast and that's kind of my fault because i gave him organifi pure that is your fault keep before, it up dude skew the odds before we started the podcast <laughs> uh organifi pure it's a natural nootropic we love it it's stimulant free but you definitely feel stimulated when you drink it if you go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump and use the code Mind Pump, you'll get 20% off. Then we talked about Colorado's incredible weed sales. I think it was like $6 billion they've hit so far. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Weed equals money. Then we talked about how Google is in hot water for not telling people that they're spying on them without them knowing. Um, and the future of targeted marketing. Yeah, you sneaky bastards. Then we get into the fitness portion of this episode. The first question was, uh, this person can hardly do any pull-ups. Should they just go and practice like one rep at a time? Or should they do a bunch of reps on an assisted pull-up machine? We give our best strategies for those of you who want to be able to do more pull-ups. The next question, uh, how important is it to be very hydrated? Is it really necessary to be walking around the gym with a gallon jug of water or are you just trying to look cool because yeah. you think you're a bodybuilder now? Uh, we go over the science of hydration in that part of this episode. Next question. This person has some digestive issues and done has, lo- has done a lot of research on the food industry. And, you know, they want to go to a restaurant every once in a while and enjoy themselves, but they know that the food isn't ideal. Uh, how do they get around that? Like, how do they achieve balance in their life? Good discussion there. The ne- and the final question. Can you develop food intolerances from eating too much? And can you develop food intolerances from not eating enough of a particular food? Again, more great conversation in that part of the episode. And also, Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to tell everybody that the new revamped version of MAPS Performance is live. It's up there now. New videos, new workout blueprints. It looks beautiful. Now remember, MAPS Performance is our fitness program designed for people who want to look balanced but also move and function like a well-balanced athlete. This is for people who want strength, but they also want speed, and they want endurance and agility. All of those things, that's what that program does. And surprise, it's 50% off all month long. MAPS Performance, half off. Here's what you do to get the 50% off promotion. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code GREEN50, G-R-E-E-N-5-0, for that discount. And by the way, on that site, we have our other MAPS programs, for different people and different goals, make sure you go check them all out. Bro, why do you always get... What are the odds? Why do you always get 80s songs stuck in everybody's head in the whole place? Uh, That's, it is. It's Adam's fault. Yesterday, this is, I'll sing them yesterday Adam was singing that one song. I don't even know what the right word is, okay? But this is what it sounds like. Su- su- studio. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck he's saying, but I know the song. Yeah, a little Phil song. Collins, dude. It's Phil Collins. Yeah. Su- 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 yeah. That's yeah. What, oh. yeah. What is he saying? Oh, oh. I have no idea. Okay. Su- su- yeah. Something like that. Yeah. 
Then this morning, he's right, walking around the studio singing uh, Cars. Yeah. What song was that? You're in my car. You're that I feel one. Safe no, that TV. wasn't me. That was you. Was no, I don't even know what that is. You know car. You know the song Cars. Oh, dude, that was that's this guy then. Dun, 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 dun. No. you don't know that song. I was singing I can't dance. The other, I've been on a Phil Collins. That's kid. the other one. Oh, yeah, true. really? Are you listening to Phil Collins? I am right now. I used to love Phil Collins. Really? You don't like Phil Collins? Yeah, no a lot of jams. I'll be honest. I'm neutral. You're I'm neutral I'm, on him. Yeah, I'm neutral. He's good, bad, whatever. Oh, he's great, dude. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm. So, you, are you literally jamming out to Phil Collins right now? Absolutely. I'm rolling around in the car with the music blaring. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, absolutely. It, it, Phil Collins. It, it, does, what is it like? What What emotions does that music? You know, I, all music invokes <clears throat> some kind of emotion. Well, I think it's it's the other way around. I think because uh, we just talked about my 20 year reunion on the podcast. And so it's kind of taking me me back to old memories, twenty years ago and beyond. And like, bro, Phil Collins was thirty years ago or more. No, not thirty years yeah. ago. Yeah. I would, I, no, I mean his what when he first started, but there, like Genesis, maybe yeah, yeah Genesis. like that one's that that so goes Susudio. He was the drummer too. Oh forever. wow, you know what Susudio means? So it is a made up word. Oh, it's an imaginary girl's name. It's the, su- su- Susudio. Yeah, the song is about having a crush on someone when you're young. And that is the name to encompass any girl. I think you just, that's funny. That, I guess you can do that when you're a singer. You can just yeah, make up something to sound cool. Randomly All the time. Sure do that. You know, that's Dude, a word I just yeah. made up right now. You know what's an old song that popped into my What's the hip hop one you always do all the time? Yeah. Um, whenever, yeah. Whenever I yeah. hear the, <laughs> I, I die, dude. I, it's it's like, perfect though because it fits, uh, you know, in that new beat. That's what they do. Yeah. No, dude, on my phone, like on the Spotify list, like randomly, it started playing. Uh, I wanna sex you up, oh, and I was song. like, "Wow!" And I listened to the whole thing and was embarrassed because I stopped at a stoplight and like my window was open. That was, bro. That's uh, uh color me one. bad. Yeah, color me bad was uh, they were the fucking shit, dude. That was then. such a taboo. So I remember being in sixth grade and like you all the se- sixth graders were singing about. It. We didn't know what's. I mean, maybe one guy knew it. Bro, sex was. do you remember the song uh, "When I Think About You, I Touch Myself"? Do you guys yeah. remember that? I touch myself. I yeah. want you to love me. I remember because I was young when that saying came out. So I was just learning that you could do that when you think about someone. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember hearing the song and I was like, like I didn't receive that gift till like, later. What the fuck? Everybody does that? <laughs> well, maybe yeah. she just, just, she does. She wasn't attractive, but of course, no. as a teenage boy, when you saw that video and she's admitting that she touches herself, yeah, I remember my, just like, I'm going to touch parents, Mind blowing. My right parents, now. uh, uh, made me destroy my knockin' boots uh, song. Ooh, boy, I love you so. Oh, that one? Yeah. Oh, it's funny so. because I remember getting in trouble because I was listening to that, and it wasn't until way, way later did I go back and listen to it again and, to, to, and hear the lyrics. I'm like, oh, my God. It's like... <laughs> It's not even bad. Like they don't even swear in it, but they're insinuating having sex. Yeah. And so, you know, at that age, I don't know how. I'm probably what's the third or fourth grade when yeah. that came out. You know, fourth grade. Yeah. Or and so. fast forward, you know, 15 yeah. years, and they're skeet, 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 and <laughs> skeet on your face. They got whoa. They went. <laughs> they 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 gave advanced. Yeah. They progressed quite they a bit. Did. Do you think? Uh, yeah. And this, because your your theory is that we're going to see a rise of conservatism in the next you know 10 years or so so do you think that we're going to see that even if you're right then you we should see that reflect in even music and entertainment wouldn't you think uh mm. that's a good question i the reason why i think there's a rise is because it's it, for a long time it wasn't cool and now it's starting to become cool to like hey i think i'm gonna you know get married and have kids yeah. and i think i'm gonna you know do all these what they would consider or traditional ab- or abstain values. even from sex i mean that that That's was starting to happen that was in the bit. book i gen they did talk about the generation mm-hmm. coming out up now is but i they attribute that to their just their level of awareness uh sexual diseases statistically what their what what uh the likelihood of getting pregnant and then what your life turns out if you get pregnant at a, before a certain age and so they attribute the 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 lack of sex the lack of hooking up and the waiting and the and the the morals that what we're trying to argue is actually coming from just their level of knowledge of knowing i don't know maybe hmm. but but i can get behind it i mean maybe right but i but what i also notice is that kids tend to do the opposite of what people think they're supposed to do yeah so it's gotten to the point now where kids know they're supposed to do you know drugs and have sex and do all kinds of crazy stuff and they're like well that's, that's not lame. cool i'm gonna yeah i'm yeah. gonna rebel and be 
straight laced and stuff. How funny would that be? Like kids are in their car listening to like Gregorian chants. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? Just, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like really? That's what yeah. you're into now? Yeah, you kids, you need to relax. Man. Uh, did you guys hear? Did you guys see that post they did on my story? The 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 bars beer special, and someone slapped a Bernie Sanders sticker on sticker on it. <laughs> That is describe a, that. It says, uh, buy one beer for the price of two and receive a second beer absolutely for free. <laughs> it's got a picture of, uh, of Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Dude, funny. he's going to run. He, he is. Of course he is. He's going to run. Isn't, for, he, isn't, he, isn't he favored in, on college campuses? Uh, yeah, I mean, Statistically, I hear Dude, that he, he's supposed to. The Democrats fucked him in the last one. Yeah, so is he still running as a Democrat? Because didn't they, like, how's that going to go down? I don't know. This is going to be a great, this is going to be a very entertaining election. Right. It's going to be pretty fun to watch. That's all. I'm going to sit back and just- When's it all begin? <sighs> uh, wow, when's that happening? Is that two, uh, 2020? 2020. It can't right? be somebody reasonable and rational because but when they, that, they're not going to make it through. Mm -mm. It just never is the case. Do they start? Yeah, but do, when do they start like hardcore campaigning and stuff like that? Doesn't that start leading up before that? It's already starting. It is already starting. Yeah, it's already starting. Oh, really? Yeah, you're already seeing them. Well, then where, when, when this is well, now they're announcing, they're all okay, announcing so, who's going to run for the nomination. And when does that end? They're like, gathering money. So when when does the, the uh, everyone Yeah, because I heard uh, Andrew Yang campaigning on Joe Rogan recently, and I heard like some other candidates are already out there, like just, yeah, trying to raise money. That's what they're, that's why they're announcing. They're announcing, yeah. like Bernie Sanders raised like, I don't know how many, a million or something like that in a very short period of time as soon as he announced that he was going to run. Um, you have, uh, yeah, yeah, this is, that's a, right now is when shit starts to really kick into gear. Is Hillary going to throw her name in the hat again? I think so. Oh my I, God. This is serious? going to be, I mean, it's just, you, okay. So there's two approaches to this. You can either a freak out over the whole thing. Like most people do Yeah. completely ignore it. Like the other half of the people do or do what I do, <laughs> I'm on that side. which is I watch it <laughs> yeah. and I observe and I laugh and I, and I and just look at the process and just. It's it's uh it's That's interesting where I'm at now because I I never cared but again we talked about this like having kids it's like all of a sudden now I'm like I, I kind of have to care a little bit yeah. it's like but now but it's so ridiculous I can't like I can't I, I'm just not like that involved with it anymore. I'm excited to see cuts the, into my sports time. I, I can't yeah, wait to totally. see the ads that Trump runs because he's been so <laughs> <laughs> so out there yeah and willing to say whatever. I wonder what his ads are going to look like. <laughs> you know, think about just it. Pure smear campaign. Well, he's like just gonna, everybody there, bro. He's just going to go after for everybody. He's going to go after. He goes after people in the media. He goes after celebrities. Yeah, like presidents never really. If a celebrity said something about a president, they usually just ignored it. But Trump will like come out the next day and hammer you. So this will be an interesting. And I, th I think it's a, actually it's been a smart strategy. He's got for him. the ace in the hole, dude. He's got Kanye is going to rip up an album just for him. Oh my god. Oh, you know that's gonna, I'm calling that right yeah, now. Yeah, you're Kanye's right. Gonna, yes, Kanye is going to have an album release like right before and it's going to be like all this all Trump shit. Watch. Oh, wow. that would be hilarious. Yes. Dude, what was the uh the the shoe picture you had in your story? <laughs> An exploded oh, shoe. Zion Williamson last last night, okay, so Duke is playing uh North Carolina. Duke's number 1. It's college men's basketball for those who don't know. Uh, and That's like the ultimate rivalry, right? There. Yeah, it's a great. It was it's one versus eight. Uh, I actually didn't even finish watching the game. I was doing other stuff with Katrina, but uh, he blew through his shoe, like, Wait, through like the rubber. Explain like this. So I posted this in my story. So if those are listening right now, you can go back and probably look at my story. It'll still be up there when this goes live, I believe. Um, he he was making a hard cut, and his foot just went through the shoe. Yeah, completely through. Yeah, never seen that ever. Yeah, what, like do you the think whole so soul of it just went off. You yeah, think someone sabotaged him. No, I think that. You don't think so? I think no. Uh, what I think. What I think it is is we have CIA. never seen uh, someone Rockefeller. as explosive and as athletic and as big as he is. In Fuck off. No, he's so explosive and big. Yes, he is, dude. Yes. regular shoes can't hold him. Yes, he, I, he needs. A we new have never had a two hundred and seventy pound. Teenager, he's two hundred and seventy pounds yeah, and dude. dunking three sixty, fucking agile as fuck and fast as fuck. Yeah, he's a freak. He's like a superhuman. He's like Shaquille O'Neal, but agile, bro. It's yeah. crazy. It's insane what this kid's doing. He'll <laughs> he'll go number one overall. So his, his shoes couldn't. He's contain the next him. phenom. Huh? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's. Did what, he get hurt? Yeah, so they don't know. I mean, the reports haven't came out exactly. Maybe when this goes live, we'll know more information. Uh, it does sound like he sprained or hurt his knee. I don't know to what extent. 
Yeah. Uh, hopefully he's not hurt really bad. I would hate for that to happen. I know I posted some jokes about it, but so these were <clears throat> these were Nike shoes. Yes. Yeah, so did you see Puma and Re- everybody's? Uh, they're all tweeting right the away. Jabs right that away. Would, yeah, that wouldn't have happened if it was a Puma. You know, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> Nike. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know that's going to be well, it dude. You for could sure totally campaigns. you could totally spin this into a crazy <laughs> shoe campaign. Yeah. If you think about oh, it. Oh, I don't think it's a matter if it will. It's a matter of when. Who does it first and how fast? Like for sure. I mean, just the fact that on Twitter instantly all the other big shoe companies were all over it. Uh, and it will make big news, at least in the sports world. It'll be talked about on ESPN. It'll be talked about all over the place for the next two days, at least. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely. Look, uh, you will see a a, a shoe company shoe probably. Shoegate. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a big deal. So you're saying he's uh, a teenager? Yeah, bro. He's, what, 19? Oh, my. So was he in high school last year? No, 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 no. Or the year before? No, no, no. Two, two three years ago. He's a, he's a soft freshman. He's a freshman in, 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 yeah, so fucking two years ago he was in high school. You imagine a 250-pound or 60-pound senior yeah. playing basketball? Yeah, like, let me check, let me <laughs> you're check this my little here. high school kid, and that kid's just dunking and sitting on your head. Well, you're just like, run! Everybody ah, move out of the <sighs> way! Yeah, you know? I'm like, oh, you can have it. So, wow. Oh, excuse me. He's six foot seven, two hundred and eighty-five pounds. Oh my god! So he's two hundred and eighty-five pounds. Uh, he's projected to be the uh, first overall pick in the two thousand NBA draft. He's born on July six, two thousand. So he's eighteen. Yeah. Holy, wow. Where's he from? Uh, Atlantic Coast Conference. No, that's where he's. He's ACC right now. Sorry. Uh, I don't know where he's. What six, high school seven? He came from? Let yeah, me see. that's kind of average height for the NBA, though. Six seven, yeah. That's I mean, still it's big. high. It's definitely tall. Don't get me wrong. I'm just yeah. saying, like, there's a lot. There's like what is seven the average footers basketball? Yeah, player? there's a lot of seven footers, but not that many. There, I mean, yeah. but his size and his mass. Oh, there's is, none. Yeah, there's, there's nobody none. that big. He's, he's yeah, because weren't you guys telling me that that in the it was at the 90s and early 2000s basketball players were all that was a thing to be big and, and strong, and then they went more to this more svelte, agile look. Yeah, yeah. But he's so Giannis, Giannis right now who plays for the Bucks and Durant are. What we believe the the new breed in the future of NBA players, which is a seven like foot lanky. a seven foot lean guy that can handle the ball and shoot from the perimeter, mm-hmm. and you're seven foot, which means you could technically go under the hoop and back. Nobody's half. gonna block your shot, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the and both Giannis and Durant are these seven footers that have that. Now uh, Zion isn't quite as tall, but he's. Hundred pounds heavier. Yeah. I mean, he's he got muscles. Or eighty. Him. I mean, Durant can't be more than two hundred pounds. I mean, he's a stick. Mm. So, so this Zion will just be a physical specimen in there. It's going to be fascinating to watch him transition in the NBA. He, how how he, big was Shaquille O'Neal when he was playing? Oh, he's he's seven. What three? Seven two? No, 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 no. no. Sha- Shaq is seven. Look, foot. look that up. Doug. Shaq is seven foot also. Yeah. Um, but Shaq and Shaq is heavy, but Shaq is not. As nowhere near as agile as this guy. Yeah, Shaq was that, like the Shaq was the get crazy. in the get in the paint, box you know totally box somebody out to get the ball and yeah. then power up on somebody. This kid can cross you over, spin move. Yeah, I mean he's fadeaway shots like he, all those things. He play he plays like close to like a seven one. So he yeah. plays like and what's his weight, Doug? His Shaq's weight is probably around the same. See there, there's LeBron James is six eight. Okay. So he's like. Oh, okay. yeah. So he's he's. I he, thought. I have some reason I thought he's he already that. built like prime LeBron James right yeah. now. Yeah. So LeBron came in much smaller, uh, not height wise, but weight wise, and developed into this specimen that he is today. Um, so how much does LeBron weigh now? LeBron's up there too. LeBron's two seventy. See, there's Shaq's three twenty four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Shaq is couldn't. I mean, he. But yeah, he was he was like in even, the paint, like he he's, was never outside the perimeter. The 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 physical capabilities that Zion can do is closer to LeBron than it is like him. So mm. he's in between that weight, and I think Le, LeBron's I think two sixty something. So LeBron's not much. I mean, Le, you're talking about the greatest player that ever played the game, in my opinion, as, yeah. as far as dominance is concerned. Two fifty, LeBron's two fifty. Yeah. There you go. That's yeah, a big boy. A lot of and muscle. So two eighty five. So and think, this kid's eighteen or nineteen. Right. Right. That doesn't make any sense. And his, yeah. they, they were showing him. He's gonna be a force. They were showing him. I remember the. Isn't that crazy? The the variant, the extreme variance that humans uh, come in, in in terms of size and everything. Well, what I think is <laughs> what what is happening, and uh, that's just a whole another. That's another species, basically. It pretty much. Well, a lot of this is attributed to that Netflix documentary that we or that TED talk that we watched, which is 
now you have what you have is like parents that both are genetic freaks that have a child. So the the likelihood of them that kid being a genetic freak, and if the, both basketball parents have a kid, it's just like well, this you kid. Know, it's crazy. And you about start, that and then you, and yeah, then you yeah. start them very early. People, some people are actually like looking for that, like in a in a in a mate, like they're looking for somebody that has those like ath like super athlete for sure. Genes. Hey, it's that crazy. Was, that was part of the hey. That's part of how Katrina closed me. You kidding me? <laughs> She's D one <laughs> yeah, college. She is D one college basketball player. Are you oh, kidding yeah. me? Like. You know, so, so, get it. you get extra credit for that. You know what I'm I saying? I wasn't considering any of that. Right, so, yeah. right. Absolutely. So here's some, Maybe I should have been. So here's something that's trippy about all that, right? So when you when you take humans and you put them all on a spectrum, I don't care what you measure, intelligence, height, weight, performance, whatever, most people make up the middle and then very, very, and the further out you go to the ends, the fewer people they are. So if you go on one end of the, let's if we talk about height, right, uh, for example, most people in the middle very few people on the extreme of tall, and most people are not. Excuse me. Mo, most people are not on the extreme tall, and most people are not on the extreme short. That's a very very small percentage. But when you take people from the extremes, and then they have children, you would think that it amplifies those effects. So if you take two extremely tall individuals or two extremely intelligent individuals, what they actually find is that the 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 genes try and bring the person more towards the middle. So if you get two extremely intelligent people, they will definitely have a smarter kid, but that kid's the odds that that kid's intelligence are going to be a little bit more towards the middle or actually higher than they would be to go more really? to the extreme. Where yeah. did, you heard that? What? Yeah, this is actually something I've 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 read and researched. Hmm. So it's so it, now that's when we're talking about the extremes, of course. And yeah. we're, you're also talking about intelligence too. Intelligence, like, cause, cause, height, weight, uh, weight um, performance, anything. So if you took like, and I'm talking about the extremes now because. The middle is a bit of a range too. Like the mm. middle for height is probably anywhere between five seven to six foot or something. So you're like saying that, right? if a, a a six one woman and a six eight uh, man have a child, it's more likely they're going to land in the five ten range. No, than it no, is no. They're going to land no. six foot eight. The odds that that child will be taller than the dad are actually quite small. The odds yeah. that the child will be a little shorter than that, the dad, or a little bit higher. If he's seven foot and oh, she's okay, now that it's, makes it's always trying to that makes always, that makes sense. But then mm-hmm. you you still you're almost guaranteeing that they're going to at least be yeah. this high by because if I, if you have for example yeah, if you, I'd be six seven if which if been awesome if six <laughs> damn it if I'm if I'm well let's just use me as an example I'm six three Katrina is is five ten if we have we have a kid we'll probably find the kid will probably be somewhere in the middle of that the likelihood that he be he's 65 or 66 is probably less likely but it's also less likely that the kid's going to be 58 well it depends also right yeah but it depends on how far out you are on the end so let's say let's say the end 7 foot let's use 7 foot as an example which is extremely tall like how often do you see someone that's 7 feet tall in real life i've never yeah, in my very life rare. never i've never seen anybody 7 foot tall except for when i've gone to a, a basketball game so if you took two people who were seven feet tall, because it's such an extreme height, the odds that their child will be shorter than them is actually much higher than <laughs> if you were both, let's say, six feet mm-hmm. or both 5'10". Mm-hmm. It's as if it's, it's almost like our genes are always kind of trying to drive us more towards the middle. Same thing with extreme intelligence, extreme whatever. And it's the same thing on the other end where you go, to, you know... Uh, you know, really short or whatever. I, you know, that makes sense for for survival reasons or evolution, yeah. or evolutionary extremes reasons. Extremes because extremes good. aren't. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the downfall of being a Shaquille O'Neal is the likelihood of him living to be 103 is way less likely than somebody who is like an average height, average build. So that could make. Yeah, sense. I haven't seen many families that have like multiple extreme kids. You know, that are like all like well over you know seven foot. No, it's typically it's always just like one. It's you know, typically outlier. a combination of genetics and a almost like a rolling of the dice of the mix. You know, like oh, you got the perfect. You know, it's a good example of this is uh, Robert Oberst. Yeah, he I was, was just ta- thinking that he was talking about how his family, most of them are kind of big, but no one's like a strong man, yeah, massive, no, nowhere like, near even his height. Yeah, he's a giant. And so, you know, that, that's kind of like a roll of the dice a little bit. Well, I was the same with my dad. He was 6'7", and uh, his his dad was like 5'11", and, and his mom was like, you know, 5'7". Mm-hmm. So. But what, what also seems to be happening is that middle... Sounds like the mailman. S- seems to me... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it was. Hey, yeah. I got to meet that guy. Yeah. Where did, Mom, where did I get my height from? Uh, hold on a second, <laughs> honey. I, Thor's at the, at the yeah, door actually, with He used our to mail. get that joke a lot. Dude. Yeah. They would get that all the time. Oh, we yeah. used to, people used to tease our family like that because 
all there's five of us, right? And then that step and half involved in there too. But none of us look alike. Like none of us. Look, the most any of us look alike is I look the most like my brother, who my my step brother, who I shared no blood with. Yeah. Which is the ironic. You look at my sisters, and you have like a strawberry blonde. You have like this brown hair, green eyes, and you have hazel. It's like yeah. we look all all of us look different. <laughs> well, you guys yeah, are all like, like stork babies. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. That are, my mom cheated a lot. I don't know. That's oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. We um uh speaking of you you brought up Katrina earlier. I see she's been having the the smoothie box smoothies. Oh, month. you see her coming she, with it right now. Yeah, yeah. No, she's bro. We are going through. I I haven't got hardly any for myself, and but you know I'm all for it. So uh, I'm I'm so happy that that's what she's choosing as her go to thing right now. So which she, ones are favorite? She drinks them all actually. She rotates through. So we get the the box that actually gives you the variety pack. So we get the the, the clementine, the green, and then also the cacao or whatever. Um, I have to ask her what she hasn't. I haven't asked her actually what her favorite is. She goes through all of them. So she's been. We're already having to pick up this the pace on the box being sent to the house because she's drinking at least one a day right well, now. Well, dude, they're they're organic, right? Pesticide free. It's all natural. So stuff in there. So like the cacao. I pulled up the ingredients here because you know I, I, we haven't gone through all of the ingredients for the audience. Yeah, yeah. it's a now lot. That, of, I think a lot of people think that it's it's because it's a smoothie right away. I think we 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 connect that to like Jamba Juice and you think yeah. of like sugar and shit, and it's massive like massive added. Sugar. The only little bit of sugar that's in there is coming from the natural from the, yeah, from no the fruit. It's sugar. also high in fiber. Right, like the cacao one has got uh, seven grams of dietary fiber. But look at the ingredients, and you wouldn't know this when you drink it because it, it's a it's like a chocolate looking tasting smooth drink right yeah zucchini is there's bananas the first ingredient zucchini kale coconut water and then of course the collagen protein sunflower seeds banana so they have some puree in there coconut cream the cacao nibs cacao powder and sea salt yeah, and so what you that get is sneaky. Yeah, and yeah. It, totally right. right? That's, why my, that's why I give it to my that kids. Super sneaky. I give it to my kids. They're like it's it chocolate. Does not taste like yeah. the, that's in there. And I'm like, you're drinking zucchini. <laughs> yeah. You know, but it, here's look at the macro breakdown. It has 34 grams of carbs, 24 grams of protein, but also 12 grams of healthy fat. So it's really balanced. Yeah. So when you drink it, you feel really good. That's the cacao. And then the other ones are very similar in terms of uh, of macros. All of them around. 300 calories. I originally said that the clementine one was my favorite, but I've actually kind of, I've been using the cacao the most because it gives me kind of, I feel like it's more of a treat. Mm. Like that one, the chocolatey f flavor. So like if I have like a sweet tooth where it, I've shared on the show before how much I like ice cream and things like that. So I'm always looking for alternatives or things that give me that same kind of sensation or feeling from having. And that does that. And it's so thick. Mm. It's really thick. So it's not like you, you drink it in a glass real quick. I'll blend it up and I actually mix it because it's that's something people should know too. So when you blend it, you don't need to add any ice if you keep it frozen. So and it normally takes about a cup to a cup and a half at least of almond milk or coconut or macadamia, whatever. I haven't tried Doug's macadamia uh, nut milk yet. Oh god, my, I'm so. Sold I've got on it. it. I've got it at the house now. So, so that's, sold on that's it. the next thing is to try it with that. And it'll add the macadamia nut milk adds a little bit more uh, fats, a little mm -hmm. bit more of those healthy macadamia a nut more fats. Creamy. Mm -hmm. yep. So it's nice. really really good. Um, are you drinking them too, or is it just her? No, I am, but not. She's like. Every day she's drinking them. She's craving them. Yeah, my, my, uh, yeah, I think so now, which is great. I mean, her body needs that. I, right? I have her tracking all this week. So uh, the whole first trimester, I felt like, um, you know, I've been really, really patient with, like, letting her feel herself out and just communicate with me. And I'm not pushing the exercise hard. I'm not pushing what I want her to eat or take or whatever. She is communicating uh, with Dr. Lyon. On a, on a regular basis now. The two of them have been talking, right. which is great. So she's got her on any sort of uh, supplements that she thinks that she should take that she's probably lacking. And then right now I have her tracking all her food for this week so I can kind of dive in there and get her to, you know, boost whatever. I don't know yet. Like, we'll see. I'll know. After this week, I'll report back to you guys on if I saw that she's Well, low. She's, she's never low on protein. You guys are pretty good with that. Uh, yeah, you know, it's the fat she, that I would she's love. not now, and that's actually what kicked up the original the smoothies because she was. Remember, I told you she was like the oranges were like her thing, mm -hmm. and so I told her I said, listen, if you're really enjoying the oranges, you should do the the clementine um, smoothie box and get the collagen protein in there too because 
you're then you're not just getting the sugar and just getting what you're getting from the 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 orange. You're getting all these other benefits inside mm-hmm. there, and it, maybe it'll help feel that craving. So she's actually kind of scaled back on all the oranges she was eating, and she's actually replaced more of the smoothie box because I knew she wasn't getting enough protein. Now, is she eating eggs? <clears throat> uh, I believe she's eating eggs. Good. Make sure she has those that uh, cholesterol. Again, is really important. Again, for you'll you you know right now before I start telling her what to do, um, that the only real suggestion I had was if you're loving all these oranges. Maybe having some more of the smoothie box, so you're getting a lot of other things with mm-hmm. it that you're that you may be lacking in. This week, I'll have her track, and then I'll be way more precise about: Hey, you need to bump up your eggs because mm-hmm. you're not getting enough cholesterol. Hey, you need to bump up your fiber; you're not getting fiber. Hey, we need to reduce this. Sprinkle or, some creatine, yeah, in her stuff. <laughs> so we'll 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 see what uh, what what Pretty I have her do, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you if you remind if you guys remind little me. Little Maximus will just just rip out. Yeah, out here. yeah no, I'm excited. This is I'm a, ready, Dad. He's got a beard, and <laughs> teeth already. Next week, next week is when he can hear. So really that's what I'm excited. For really? That. Yeah, yeah. So Are you do already? You're gonna start talking to the? Yeah, belly? yeah. I'm not, I don't really talk to him right now because he can't hear right so it's kind of pointless but what he, are you going to say when you start talking to him uh, I don't know I've got a line lined up TED Talks and a couple books that are heading that way so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to put the, the Bose headphones uh, on her belly like classical this. music yeah. are you uh, are, is he they gonna... say that actually dude oh yeah, yeah, yeah I, I did that but you know what dude what if it's fucking loud and vibrating in there like you mm. think about that right like imagine if you're a tiny Infant in, or you know fetus inside well, the womb, and it's like you, boom. no, you don't want to blast. Like, I'm trying to sleep. It's, not, like a, it's not like a nightclub you're throwing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you don't blast the tummy. You just let it play in the house, and he can hear. Yeah, yeah so that's a, a reasonable. Yeah. I'm not really gonna put headphones on her belly yeah. and stuff like that. So I'm just, but I mean, we will play music and we will do. We're, What's he now? Is he gonna call you? Are you just dad, dad, daddy? Do you guys have a, a different way? Papa? Of are no, you gonna do papa? I, like, no, like, I just, <laughs> No, I don't. You didn't say no, it. Right I I'm, I'm not. It's not fucking. What's that? What's that old? Uh, that, Papa, that big, old, big daddy K. What's that old movie where they're running through the field and uh, yeah, it's, not, it's not Papa. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, oh yeah. yeah. Gone with the wind. Yeah. Papi. No, it's nothing like that. It's, it's Papa. No, pa- Papi. You say it right. It'll be Dad. It'll, it'll, it'll just be yeah. Dad. It'll just it'll be Dad. Just yeah, be yeah. dad. What, it's the same thing Justin calls you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's, he calls me Daddy. Sometimes. Yeah. He's. <laughs> it's Daddy. It's, it's, <laughs> dude, what's up? Are you are you starting a swimming uh, swimming routine or what? So, I saw you post I picture. I saw the speedos. So he had I, speedo. No, he had trunks. Oh, trunks. So I didn't tell. I didn't tell anybody because that's how I roll. Uh, except for your how many followers? Except for millions of people. No, no, no. Uh, until daily. I do it. Yeah. Like so, that was like a. I was on my way to the pool. Uh, um, a couple nights before, uh, we were talking about this off air. I had this epiphany. Like, I need to do this, and I don't know. I just I get like this where there's something that I feel compelled that I, I I want to do or I need to do, and then maybe it's a combination of the two of those. And the motivation behind it was this. I thought to myself, when this when my son arrives, um, I know that I'm going to be challenged with uh, exercise and uh, what time I do that at. And I right now I have the luxury of going whenever I feel like it, and I know that will go away. And it's probably most likely that I'll have to create some sort of a morning routine uh, that I that I do. And so I have also been trying to, you know, be as be more disconnected from all the the phones and the and all that shit as much as possible. And I thought what a better what a great way to kind of combine meditation with exercise by doing something that I'm already kind of naturally good at. By no means am I good to because I have terrible swimming mechanics as I found out yesterday. Um but I can do it, and I'm, I, I think I have the body type to be really good at it, and I think it'll be fun to- pre- Now, why swimming? Because I think that I have a natural gift for it, okay. and I think that I can- Do you like it? I don't know. I did, yesterday was my first day. When you were a kid, mm. you-, you, you ne- I've never swam in a pool for exercise in my mm. life. Okay, because you- We saw you of- race one time. Yeah, right. and yeah, you did really good. That was great. You used, you talked about how when you were a kid, though, you guys would go to the lake and stuff a lot. So I, I- Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fish out of water for sure. I mean, I grew up on a lake. I lo- I'm, I'm probably- Of all the sports, snowboarding, wakeboarding, basketball things I do, I'm probably best at wakeboarding. Uh, so I uh, and I was really good at kneeboarding when when that was popular back in the days. So I grew up on a lake uh, and lake sports, and so I I swam like that. I didn't ever get in a pool. I've never gotten a pool like I did yesterday, and swim for laps and just see like you know how far I can go or whatever. And and so the the goal is this: the goal is for me to swim three days a week 
and lift two to three days a week. Mm. Uh, and the lifting is going to be very customized for what I'm working on right now. Uh, the overhead squat is going to be something I'm in there squatting, overhead pressing a lot, deadlifting, all the big movements is going to be the main focus and things that will probably complement uh, what I'm doing in the pool. And then the goal is on in the pool, and I started off really easy. I mean, I didn't I didn't want to kill myself day one. Uh, I did 15 laps, which was is not a lot. Uh, but it definitely was enough to get me sore today, um, and I'm gonna build on that. You just freestyle? Yeah. So I did a little bit of chest, uh, chest, and uh, um, what should we call it? Butterfly? No, not oh, butterfly. Breast Bre- stroke. Breaststroke. Thank you, Doug. The chest. I was gonna say chest stroke. Breast. Yeah, that's that's different. Yeah. <laughs> chest stroke is a different thing. Yeah. So swimming, swimming yeah, in my checked out for that one. In my opinion, if you were gonna do one repetitive cardiovascular type movement for longevity and health, and you could pick whatever, would be swimming. Yeah, by far. That and that's my. That's th- the one. I, I mean, you do that. You could do that forever, and it's and you can be quite balanced with swimming. You know, like uh, I had a I have a I had a client who I trained for years who he swam every single day miles. He would swim for two or three miles every day, and he did it for like forty or fifty years. But the way he would do it is he would alternate between different strokes. Right. So he would go freestri- freestyle, backstroke, breaststroke, he'd butterfly. And he was remarkably balanced in his body, you know, because he was th- the movements were so varied and so different. And the water, of course, naturally supports you. So your risk of injury is far lower uh, in the pool than it would be running outside or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited yeah, to see impact. how I shape up from it. Like, I'm curious to see how it starts to shape my body. Uh, and that's what I meant by how I'll train. Like, so I'm the swimming is the main focus right now, and then I'm going to try and lift to complement that. Now, more than likely, the things that will get the least amount of work in the pool and that will need the most amount of tension uh, from training will probably be legs. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that will probably be the 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 heavy focus of my my training regimen. And then based off of what I see aesthetically, because I'm also, I'm not like trying to be the most optimal swimmer. So I'm not like going to be training to be a better swimmer. I still want to look good. So I'm going to, as I, you know, because Katrina right away, like her only one, she was like, oh, that sounds awesome. And she's like, now, are you going to lose your ass? Because that's like my favorite thing about, <laughs> like, no, I'm going to be squatting. That's like an anchor in the pool, bro. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna like be, Justin's got that drag. Dude, I sink. Oh, so, speaking of drag, uh, everybody saw the, everybody saw the Viore shorts and was like, oh, you got to go Speedo, this and that. I'm like, well, hold on. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's, yeah. there's levels. There's levels to, exactly. Yeah. I am not a swimmer yet. I am not good at this yet. And yeah, when I'm I get- boy shorts. When I get when I get good, I will look the whole part. It's like the guy, and every, they're all telling me I need to do this. There's a ton of them on my. It's like the guy that goes and does a thousand dollars worth of shopping for fucking right. basketball gear. He <laughs> yes. never played basketball. Yes, he sh- yeah, exactly dude. what went through my head. I'm like, I am not going to be the kid who came on the basketball court and he's got wristbands on, armbands yeah. on. You know what I'm saying? The That's latest the first Jays, kid on double layer yeah. socks. Everything that gets out there. Glasses. And he can, yeah, he can't dribble goggles. the fucking ball. Yeah, like, get goggles. out of here. You're saying, <laughs> like, I, I got some cool goggles. Well, that, I got my waterproof headphones. That like, being said that being said you don't need to swim to enjoy speedos there you can actually you can actually wear them you're not going to sell any huh? of us on that no, yeah. no i'm just saying i know you don't need I to i know you enjoy it yeah no. you know what i mean yeah. well i also am going to shave my legs before i get to the speedo too so i was going to ask dude other. yeah are you like streamlining no, the whole process or hey, what when i when i'm when i'm the people want to know if i take this to a level where i'm actually good and i'm starting to time my laps and i'm trying to improve that these will be some of the strategies I do to do that. I mean, mm. I would to make myself look and feel better. When I'll be right. like, "Hey, yeah. now I put the cap like, on, ooh, I got less drag." Yeah. yeah, but right now, like <laughs> swimming from one side of the pool to the other is fucking exhausting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, getting rid of eliminating drag with my hair or with my speedo or some shit. I'm like, I got a lot of other big rocks to fix before. I mean, I was just trying to breathe right. You know, did, that's, did, you said you had waterproof headphones. I do. So, how does that work? Did you leave your phone outside the pool and it's yeah, wireless? Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, this was cool. This uh, and I researched it a little bit before I bought them. I, I bought the new uh, JBL endurances to those because I've getting a lot of people asking about that. Yes, they make waterproof uh, Bluetooth um, headphones. Now they are, what I the mistake I made yesterday and why I wasn't able to use them and I thought I could is they're Bluetooth connected and so I can play my Spotify or whatever on my phone. But when you get in the pool, you have to go into MP3 mode, meaning. 
I have to actually take those, plug them into my computer, download a list of songs I want to listen to in into them, and then they go. They, and then when you're in the water, because it can't, the Bluetooth doesn't go through the water. Oh, I see. So it's not coming from your phone; they it, get stored in the headphones. Yes, mm. that's what uh, MP3 is. So that's you know what, sonar. Dude? Can I make a case for you right now? Uh, I think it might be good to do no electronics in the water. Eventually, I will. Right now, no. Right now, I need extra. Why do I, why do I feel like you're, you're like a kid, like just yeah. get angry with me right no. now? No. Well, well, that's fine. <laughs> well, because, do whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> because I know, I know that you're. I know where you're coming from, and I've thought about it already. That's why, I, and I know why the thought process behind all this for me. This is just how I do shit, right? I have I've already thought about how I'm going to do everything, mm. and one of the things that I plan to do eventually is it to, to be extremely peaceful and quiet. But right now it's not therapeutic. Right yeah. now it's yeah. fucking hard work. It's like me playing like playing basketball for me. You you could blindfold me. I can go shoot on a court and it is uh everything gets it's it's silent for me because it's I've done it for so long. I don't need to look at the ball. I don't need to pay attention to how I shoot. Like I've got it all down. When swimming comes that way and it becomes therapeutic, then I probably will eliminate music. Right now, right now you need to be distracted yeah. from the fact yes. that it fucking hurts. Yes, dude. And I don't know if you brought it up or not, so but like I remember uh, also like like tripping out on this for the fact that like you know how you get out of the water and you're super wrinkly, especially in your fingers. Yeah. Like how that's actually uh, an evolutionary advantage to grip to help you grip help underwater. You grip underwater. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I was when always I, was... I always wondered why. Like you know, because I was so wrinkly. No, they actually did a test on that where they had people gripping uh, slippery objects or smooth objects, and uh -huh. the more pruny or whatever your their fingers became, the better their grip was. Yeah, isn't that weird? Maybe we, Our, it makes maybe a lot we of started sense. under the water. Huh? Yeah, we maybe we started people. under the water. Well, that, of course we did. I mean, that's at least what evolutionary theory says. It all came from the We were the mermen. Ocean. Yeah. yeah. I, look, humans have always lived near water. If you go through, and they still, even in modern times, the, lar the most human population is always near water. We're always drawn to it. Definitely before you know modern advances, that's where shit was fertile. That's where there was food, fishes there. Uh, it's, it's just the best place to live. If you had to live anywhere... And, and, and be a hunter-gatherer or whatever, not have modern technology, you'd want to live near water. That would always be the, well, know, it's essential. the yeah. ultimate thing. So <laughs> I, I noticed you guys are pretty hyper. Is it the new uh, <laughs> podcast prep that I'm doing? Yeah, right yeah. I'm appreciating the, the, the pure setup that you're doing every the single podcast day. Podcast primer. I want to, every time we podcast, before we podcast, I'm going to hook you guys up with the Organifi Pure, drink mm. it, and I've already noticed that the episodes have been yeah. sharper. We're very chatty. Yeah. Are you doing any pre-workout before your swim? That might be a good thing to try. Uh, I haven't yet. I mean, yesterday was day one, right? So there's, again, there's like levels to all this stuff like i'll enter i'm not the guy who goes like and i think this is important to talk about too because we talk about this on the show i think a mistake that people make when they go to do anything it's like rah everything yeah, i need to learn everything yeah everything all at once it's like you know it, what i've i've gotten really good at is knowing to set very simple small goals with as little work put into it as possible it's like I'm going to get in there. I'm going to do 15 laps. And mm. I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to go sit in the steam. And then the next time I come in, I'm going to do 17 laps. And then the next time I come How in- How are I'm your gonna... transitions? Like uh, as you go to do that flip move? Oh, and I'm then not even- Can I'm you not... even do that? No. Like, just turning. Dude, right, I can't do that. Dude, right so, now, right now, are you kidding me? Right now, swimming from one side to the other, I need to stop for a second to catch my breath before I go back the other direction. Mm. Right. Because just breathing so is- So that's like month five or just, something. Just doing freestyle in an Olympic-sized pool- and breathing correctly, right? That's already ch challenging. Like not a lot. That's a te there's a technique to swimming, catching your breath, and then going right back in, yep. and, and without mm -hmm. like losing your stride. Right. That's already. I'm not good at that already. Yeah. So I tend to hold my breath more than I'm supposed which to. Exhaust you faster. Right. Which yeah. then by the time I get to the other side, I have to like catch my breath and then go do it again. So I'm like horrible right I'm now. I'm a terrible yeah. swimmer. I yeah, would horrible. I would hire someone. I know. I can't. I can't even begin. The only thing that when I when like I've talked float. about on this show about the the there's definitely like if you were to have if i were to hold my breath and just go as fast as i can i can hang with a lot of people that swim mm -hmm. but that's just because i think i have been built to move fast in the water my technique you do have long monkey arms yeah it's horrible mm -hmm. but i'm this is what i'm excited about i'm excited to see if i now can now that i'm looking at you right now you do kind of you you do you do you're, you're built like, like a canoe yeah you got the long monkey arms long torso your legs, if you stop working Narrow. out, would be perfect. Oh, my legs would go away to nothing. Yeah, my legs would go to nothing because I have a tiny waist. Mm -hmm. It's taken a lot to build them to where they are now. I Damn, will. what if you could have been an Olympic fucking medalist, bro? Well, just well missed your calling. Let's find out. My my goal Adam is Phelps. 
My goal is to get really good and then call somebody out on the show. Be like, all right, give me give me fucking some of those best swimmers out there that are listening to the podcast right now. Let's see what I got. Greenfield will challenge you. I just, oh, I will, I, seen, I will whoop Greenfield. Oh, oh my God, really? Oh, oh, I, will, I don't know if I would say oh, that, oh, dude. Okay, I'll put that right oh, now let's on put that. that. Bro, I'll don't put money on I that. I will do that. I seen I'm, him destroy uh, Kyle Kingsbury when I'm, I was up there. I am not even scared of Greenfield. I'm not in a swimming me. contest? It, right now I am. Yeah. Well, give yeah, me, so give, me give some, you some months. Yeah, okay, right, oh, we'll give course. you the training. I'm, I'm not calling him out right now, but okay. I will. I fucking am not afraid of Ben. Doug, mark this. Cause For sure. I'm definitely betting oh. this. Yeah. Ben, ben is a nerd who's gotten good at shit like oh, that. He's not no, a pure he's athlete. Oh, no, he's not going to the This is for you, Ben. Come get some. No. He's a savage, dude. I don't know. Ben is a fucking beast. Yeah. Nah, I'm not even afraid, bro. You know what? <laughs> not even. I, I like the, not, I like not even the, the confidence. Slide, not even the slice, bro. How you watched me hang with two two co- collegiate level full ride fucking well, swimmers. They beat you? Yeah. yeah, but not by a lot. Did you see how much I smoked everybody else and then how bunch how barely they beat me? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say it's barely, but it, you did good. Oh no, it was it, yeah, yeah, it was you, like it was like two lengths. You were that far away. Yeah, no, yeah, you did you, good. All the rest of the you assholes were fucking whole oh, half yeah. of a pool oh, behind I was, me. I was sinking. Oh me, I was just watching you guys. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I could barely breathe. I was uh, yeah. I was on the side of the pool where uh, <laughs> yeah. I could stand Cra- my toes. Craig, was Craig like who was talking the most shit, was like a whole fucking pool length away. I got yeah, out did. of the pool and watched him finish his last lap. Dude, bro. I know what I'm good at. He just like yeah. tried to muscles. Yeah. I'm like, come on, bro. I mean, I this got your I got handily beat, but I mean, there were two you guys that are currently swimming at the collegiate level. Yeah. You know? So it's like yeah. the fact that I could even hang, and I was all muscled out. I was competing as a pro. So I'm 230 pounds of muscle. Like that sure cannot be advantageous for fucking swimming for sure. <laughs> so let's see. Give me give me a few months. I like this. Give me a couple months, yeah. and then I'll I'll talk some shit to Ben and whoop his ass, yeah, bro. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> even, we'll, we'll, we'll set that up. I'm not is afraid. It, is good. it unethical to bet against your co-host, or is I that what you no? <laughs> bring it, bring it. I'll be betting on myself. I'll take I'll take it. I'll you take Pete your Rose. Bet. I'll take <laughs> uh, fucking a. I'll take yeah. your guys' bets. That's I ain't scared. hilarious. I ain't scared. Yeah. Anyway, did you guys see the that article that uh, who was it that sent it? Jackie on Colorado's weed sales and what they hit recently? No, dude. Are they Col- like going up still, like substantially? Colorado made uh, six billion dollars, or uh, as taxed, six billion dollars of sales. Wow! Of marijuana, how insane! They're closing in on one billion in just taxes, fees, and revenue <laughs> since the drug was legalized in 2014. So since 2014, this <clears throat> Colorado, which is near not nearly as populous as, as California, yeah. Collected a billion fucking dollars, dude. When are we gonna catch up? Yeah, well, we're doing it now, right? Yeah, I know we are now. I just, uh, I'm like, yes, dude. Let's let's get in on this train. If they overregulate the hell out of it, they won't they won't do very well. Yeah, that's the funny thing about taxes. You know, it's interesting when you look at the effective uh, tax rate, like how much the government actually collects in taxes. You'll find that when you raise taxes or lower taxes, we kind of collect a similar amount because as you lower taxes, economic output boosts. So you collect more taxes as a result. Right. When taxes go up too high, economic output, uh, output you know, put goes down, and you collect less. And then, of course, there's loopholes and all that Outpuss. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Easy for you to yeah. say. <laughs> you guys see that Google's in hot water right now? Why? Yeah, it's oh about the the hidden mic and the yes the hidden they, they they have a hidden mic. Look at it in our first next, Apple right here behind me. The FaceTiming. So you guys are, now that huh? you guys wondering why we're getting ads that are popping up in in Doug's computer right of now. Of course, this dude. shit's on right here. Of course. So they didn't, but they didn't tell, they didn't anybody. tell anybody. That's yeah. why they're in hot water over it. So I they I guess they all the the Nest home security systems all have wow. Google mics That's in them. Dirty. And they're in, they're a lot a lot of shit right now. Everyone's talking about them. It's it's funny because Dude. as so here's what happens. I'm going to use processed food as an, as an example. Whoa! For a long time, we've been making food more palatable, right? For a long time, we've added seasoning to food. We've combined <sighs> ingredients. We cooked them and prepared them in different ways. Wait, what's your new definition for palatable? I like this. Oh, f- I forgot. I wrote oh, it down. Damn you it. you ruined okay, me. Sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll find it in a second. Okay. But uh, for a long time, we've always for for thousands of years, humans have tried to make food. Uh, taste better. And then we enter into the modern age where we can actually engineer food. We can actually create flavors with chemicals and combine flavors. And we know the science of pal- palatability and crunch and the look and the smell and all that stuff to the point where it's almost not fair. You know what I'm saying? To the point where it's not about willpower, it's about just avoiding these foods. 
Well, what if marketing is starting to get to that point? Hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like I, I've always been a big believer. Like I, that. I think it's not, not only do I believe it's going to evolve to that point. This where it's is, just not fair. This is where I liked that show so much. I think people are going. Just the opportunity to advertise to you is going to be of value. Does yeah. that make sense? So mm-hmm. just like that show. Mm-hmm. Where it's like there's, the, there's uh, companies buddy that sits next to them. Right. Yeah. Companies are going to give things away for free just to have the opportunity to advertise to you what they know you already want because right. they're gonna make a they're kickback or a pers- time. But, but yes. what I mean by all that is what if through all this listening, through compiling all this data, through incorporating artificial intelligence, which starts to figure out human behavior and how we you know, in, in predictions, what if it gets to the point where they will they will use news articles they will use colors on your phone. Mm-hmm. They will use sounds. They will use types of music. They will use when the times of day that you get advertised to, how you get advertised to. Maybe it's not even an outward advertisement, but rather they're leading you to an advertisement through posting different posts or, or revealing certain posts. To you. What if it gets to the point where it's so fucking brilliant that you are you're manipulated and you don't even realize it and it's so good it's already that the only that way happening. to get away from it it's, is turning it off it's already happening i i am i don't know how this works or how, where where it's what it's connected to but like so one of my favorite pastimes is to get online and i play uh hearts through the hap, the app that i have and there's a little ad thing that like why i'm playing the game it's always there it's like just a rant, rant, and it just cycles through ads and it has now become everything that i'm looking for sure (laughs) so it's extremely distracting and it takes a lot of discipline to like not click on it because it's like oh shit i was just looking for that yesterday and there it is for 20 percent off like Mm. it is monoxidil oh so (laughs) (laughs) it it does take a lot of discipline yeah especially for something like that fuck (laughs) so uh no but think about it this way what if it's more than that like right now you're getting ads that they think you want to see yeah but what if it's they get to the point where it's so intelligent, where it's not just ads, it's what you read, what you listen to. They're slowly manipulating and directing. Look, let me put it this way. We, we just talked about processed foods, right? Most people in modern societies know how bad and unhealthy it is to be obese, overweight, and to overeat and all that stuff. Not only do we know, but inherently we are also not attracted to it. People don't think it's attractive. They think it's ugly. So we have all these reasons why we shouldn't fucking be obese and yet most people can't help themselves because mm. the, the processed food is taken over. processed food has been engineered with so much brilliance that it's almost beyond our capability to even just for, hooked it, you're just you're it's 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 almost not fair and by the oh. way palatability here's what you're talking about it's the hedonistic Hedonism. yeah the hedonistic reward you get from food it's the pleasure aspect mm. and they've just engineered it's the so fuck sexy. out of that right what if advertising gets to that point to where you even you wouldn't even know you're being advertised to? Well, you go to the store and you buy something. And I'm like, dude, do you realize that Google just made the, you buy? All yeah, I wonder about that because I'm sure like the last sort of there's going to be people that will want to regulate that process. Absolutely, but, you know, I, like, I don't think it'll go that. Point. They don't want it to be totally subliminal because like subliminal messaging, like this is where I feel stuff like this that comes out. Like I see a lot of these companies just fucking making these things and like in in intervening as much as they can under the radar and it's almost it's it's that mentality of like uh you know we'll ask we'll pay for the consequences later mm-hmm. like you know like we'll just get we'll get away with it for now and get as much analytics and and figure out as much as we can along this these lines see what we can get away with and now that they regulate it okay now we'll tweak and modify it it's around just, the regulations it's just i maybe i don't know but it's just i don't know see here's the thing with tech is i don't know if regulations can keep up with the advancements of tech totally well, it, it's, it's a race it's always a it race it also depends on where to what extreme are you talking about because there's certain things that I think are already like that, and there's other things that I think will remain pure. For example, if you write a um, a blog article right now, like you have the, the 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 software is capable of this now, where in the middle of that blog, an advertisement specific to you gets popped up, right. and it's different for me than what it is for you. Right. We're reading the same blog because I've been I've been pinged or whatever. Right. So mm-hmm. then it then it, the ad morphs to you versus mm-hmm. me. So that software already exists, or like the software that we will eventually have for the website, where if we have somebody who looks at this blog, looks at this program, looks at this. Now all of a sudden the pictures and images and colors and everything is morphed to what that person is more likely well, to like. But I don't think that you're going to see 
the content it change based off of what they're trying to sell to you. I just don't see. Well, if it I, works, if you, it works, it will. Well, That's maybe, the thing. yeah, but what. Us as consumers will will figure that out, and you'll search for an area that's not polluted. Well, that's what I mean. Right? So then you'll we'll go elsewhere. Well, that's what I mean. We have figured out mm. that we shouldn't eat all these foods, and we shouldn't be obese, and we shouldn't. And people can't stop it. Mm-hmm. They just fucking can't stop it. It's literally like. Oh, so you think it'll be like being addicted to it? I, I, I mean, to the point where no. it's almost not. Look, let me put it this way, okay? Like we're talking, we'll we'll go back to the foods thing. For, forever it was about yeah, me you, cooking it to make it taste good and try and figure it out. But now it's gotten to the point where they know what happens to the brain, what color they need to make it, you know, what yeah, smell, you're, where you're, they place you're, it on the you're, shelf. You're tying two things together that are too different. They're like, mm-hmm. your food is necessary to live. Mm-hmm. Reading a blog is not. Like you don't, so you're, you, it's not a fair, it's not a fair comparison. Like what's happened. I agree with what, you, what you're saying with what's happened to food, but what's happening in marketing and advertising and the, and the web I, I, I think of it more as influence. I, I think it more more as people who are figuring these things out, trying to influence people and really manipulate them in pretty crazy ways. I mean, right now we do have you know that they're they're finding that other countries are going online and posting inflammatory things and posting yeah. comments to get people yeah. all hyped up to try and influence like our elections and stuff like oh, that. They have warehouses of people that are just on the computers, like out there, like 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 thousands of people like well, just, just just to throw tweets out there to to polarize and that's everybody. people that's it's people crazy. when it becomes computers oh, and it's machines yeah and think about it here's like i'll give you another good example they have figured they out have bots too but they have figured this out you can actually find this research on the type of faces that are more you're more likely to believe so they'll literally show you that this is the type of face here's the facial features here's the voice inflection that is far more likely to get people to well, believe and the, trust. All that's going to happen. That already is happening. I don't. Mm-hmm. Dis, that's different. It's. Th- th- I don't think the content you're reading, like a blog. If I go looking for a certain blog, I don't think that it's only going to get only the blogs that are going to be advertised are going to be indirectly selling me are the ones I'm. Otherwise, I'll go other places. Well, let's put. I'll it, look for a place that's not like okay, that. Okay. Well, let me put it this way then. Uh, we we we've, we've trained people for sales for a long time, and one of the one of the the, the best ways that you can be effective at communicating what you're trying to communicate is understanding who you're selling to or communicating to. This is why I always say, you know, use your ears and mouth in proportion. You want to listen twice as much as you talk because that helps dictate. If I'm trying to sell personal training, that's my general sales thing, right? But if I'm trying to sell this particular individual, I need to know a lot about them to tailor my conversation so that I can communicate effectively to this one individual. What if AI gets to the point where it figures you out and it writes a fucking blog in a second, not even a second, directed directly at you, and they write one directed directly at me, trying to sell the same thing, but because they figured me out so effectively, and this is not this is not within this is within the realm of reality. Well, well that's we know already, that that's already kind of happening. I mean, that's it's just going to get crazy. We're, I mean, we're again we. It, we're already kind of indirectly doing that with what we're doing, right? We we have got all these leads that come in through all our Facebook advertising, all of our uh, blog articles. Now, what the software that we're building out right now through HubSpot or the, or the stuff that we're building out through HubSpot is the ability to segment those people. Well, sure. now once we have those people segmented and we know that oh, this is this age to this age, yeah, and they know what we know what they're interested. So in. now, now certain blogs will only go to them. So it's already it'll, happening. It'll just like be that. like that times. I'm just imagining this could potentially be times a million. And if yeah. you've got these tech companies that have microphones. And all this shit that's in your house or in your pocket or even maybe a part of you at some point, they're I mean, gonna they're yeah, gonna they'll be able to predict what I you mean, like. Even, it's be, even even before you if know, your you'll theory like is it. true. It'll yeah. be interesting if your theory is true. Well, it, that it only feeds into my belief, which is the the unplugged versus the plugged yeah, people. Yeah. And that when that happens, when it gets to the point like that, where you're so afraid to turn your stuff on because you're you're going to be getting manipulated the minute you're looking at anything. That will that the will, underground there, people. There are some people that will, will will fall into that trap and will feed right into that or won't care. And then there'll be another half of the people that will absolutely not want to be manipulated to have to purchase things. They'll want to make that choice for themselves and they'll choose to be unplugged. It'll be weird. We'll be the Mad Max uh, group. It's going to be interesting. I'm fascinated by all of this. I'm, it's I'm, coming. I'm absolutely fascinated because right now nothing comes close. To the ability of a human to be able to communicate to another yeah. human, like machines just can't do that yet. Like if you want to communicate to person, and you want to, you know, can, you want to be able to communicate to them effectively, you want to be able to persuade them or convince them of your ideas. 
Yeah. A person can do that better than any computer or program. I, know, I speculate on this stuff all the time because I, I see too like what they want to present, and then I also see a lot of times what what we don't accept. Like you know, like the, the whole three D uh, TVs, and like they keep trying so hard to get us in the three D and like the augmented reality. I just haven't seen a way where they've really been able to get us behind that other than Pokemon Go. Like that was yeah. like one of the first successful versions of like an augmented reality. And it's like, it's just interesting to see how like they want to create this new landscape so they can advertise to you. They can profit off of it. They can uh, dictate your habits and like figure out like all of your uh, ticks and, and you know what you do throughout the day. It's crazy. Yeah. We'll see what happens. But I told you guys that Organify Pure gets you guys hyped <laughs> Man. <laughs> we're all, yeah. we're all on I fire. Didn't, I didn't even smoke. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Taylor Baca. If you can hardly do any pull-ups, is it better to do the movement raw and get one to three reps or get 10 to 12 reps on the assisted pull-up machine? This question got a lot of mm. likes. Yeah, like 50 something. A lot of people want to know how to do how to be able to do pull-ups. And in, in fact, if I think about it, I get DMs like this all the time where people are asking me, hey, I can't do any pull-ups. How can I get my, my body to be able to do right. uh, you know, more pull-ups? Both of the both of the things he's suggesting or asking about have benefit. Both yeah. of those will help you get more pull-ups. But what, what I'm about to tell you is just uh, an approach that has seemed to work for pretty much uh, anybody that I've ever worked with or coached who's had the goal of being able to do more pull-ups. If you can do, let's say you can do three pull-ups and you want to be able to do more pull-ups, one of the best things you could do is throughout the day, every day, jump up on a pull-up bar and just do one. So just do one pull-up every once in a while throughout the day, maybe four or five times throughout the day. And what you'll end up finding is through that practice, your strength will improve quite rapidly and you'll get to the point to where when you want to push your pull-ups, you'll be able to get four and then five and then six and then seven just by practicing frequently. Mm. Now, for people who can do no pull-ups at all, that's when I recommend doing a similar approach but with assistance. Um, if you don't have access to a lap pull-down machine or an assisted pull-up machine, just use the band. And, and what you do is you, you get a, a pretty strong band. Um, Rubber Bandits makes really good bands. In fact, we have those on our, our, our site, mindpumpmedia.com. But uh, tie it around the, the pull-up bar so that it's, it's hanging off the pull-up bar. And then, you know, again, several times a day. Get that band, stretch it down so that it's underneath your foot, so you're kind of standing on it with one foot. Or hook it around your or, knee. Or hook it around your knee. Um, grab onto the bar. And again, practice one or two pull-ups just throughout the day. You're not trying to get fatigued. You're not trying to work out your back or work out your arms or get sore. All you're doing is you're practicing a semi-difficult pull-up several times a day, every single day. And that daily practice, actually, you can apply that to almost any lift. You'll see a pretty dramatic uh, and consistent increase in strength as you continue doing that. Uh, if I have somebody who can only do like one body weight pull up and then they're and if that and they're terrible at it, I'm gonna lean more towards the assisted pull up machine so they can at least see what it feels like to go through full range of motion mm -hmm. and at least get two to three really good get the mechanics down. Right. So. That if that's for somebody who can only do one or less or maybe two, but if you can get at least three pull ups, so this was Katrina when Katrina first started doing uh, pull ups, she could get about three of them uh, pretty good, and she asked this exact same question, and I actually said I'm gonna load you, like I put ten pounds on her, and then we just we were doing singles and doubles a lot, so she would just do like so one, one with weight on her, yes, one with like ten pounds on her, and I I would train her like that for several weeks consistently and then we would drop the weight and then the next thing you know she's and so now she can get like eight to ten pull-ups no problem so this was actually something that her and i talked about in the last year where she was trying to progress her pull-ups and you know logically she thinks okay well, then you know i can't do 10 of these so i should go on the assisted machine and i just i'll get good at using 10 and using the assisted machine and i said no if you can already get three good pull-ups already let's actually load you 
and only get one or two of those uh, and work on your strength. Because uh, it's just like the same the same idea the way we create the programs, right? We have a strength phase, and then you have a more muscle building, and then you have like a hypertrophy type of phase. And the strength is if you can really get strong at one, meaning you lift heavier weight on that single, when you drop that weight and you go to do uh, just your body weight, you will be surprised how, how much easier the, the pull-ups become. Yeah, the, the frequency, in my opinion, if you want to get better at a single exercise – Frequent practice makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. I, I've applied this to a lot of different lifts. The first time I learned this lesson was from one of my trainers years ago. Um, he he was so strong. He had such an incredible bench press. And I would witness and watch what he would do throughout the day. And what he would do <laughs> is in between clients, he'd load up the barbell and he'd do some bench press. And he wasn't like working out and going to failure. But he would get into the bar and he'd do a you know a few heavy reps and put it up and mm -hmm. he would just do that throughout the day and I remember thinking like oh I wonder if that'll work yeah. and so I started doing that I started getting into the bar I'd load the bar up and I'd do a few reps load it up and I would just do that throughout the day and I was able to get my bench press the highest I'd ever got it in my entire life um, just by doing that and I've applied this to other lifts as well. Yeah, I look at it. So I was trying to remember that that little diagram that was posted just recently by FRC, but uh, it. It highlighted a lot of what you um, raised too in the intuitive guide uh, in terms of like uh, the way that you learn uh, and acquire skill. And so it's like the unconscious uh, incompetence, something like that. Yeah, that's the first in, phase. Right. And then it gets, so you go through those levels of uh, awareness. And uh, so when you, when you go to apply, um, apply that. And so like the frequency of it is everything because you're learning this movement and this skill to where you're, you're the more frequent you apply this skill mm -hmm. and the more times your body's able to recognize this pattern and pattern recognition becomes subconscious. And so you've, you've it's now entered into the subconscious where I go to do this movement and I just do it. And so now I'm more efficient at it. And then um, you, you know, you get really good at it. This is where uh, you're going to be able to do more reps and get stronger um, just by purely doing it more frequently. Yeah, I've, I've had clients uh, with this, and I'll, I'll tell them to get one of those um, pull-up bars you can put in your doorway. Have you guys seen these where, you know, the, 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 the old school, right? We have them. Yeah, yeah, old mm -hmm. school. And I'd say, okay, get yourself one of these pull-up bars, um, put it in your doorway, and then every time you walk by that door, do a pull-up. Just do a just single pull-up. Just yeah. jump up, do one pull-up, come down, and then you know go do whatever you were gonna do. And you end up doing, you know, between five to eight individual pull-ups throughout the day. You don't really get sore. You're not getting a crazy workout, but you're solidifying the skill, and it's really effective at rapidly building strength. And again, you can apply this to a lot of different things. It wasn't, I don't, maybe like a few years ago. I want to say five, six years ago. There, this big thing all over social media was this squat every day program. And it was, uh, people were, it was crazy because at the time, you know, six to 10 years ago, people were saying, oh, you should only ever do an exercise really hard once a week. Yeah. And doing it every day would just be too much. But this program was saying, no, no, no. Every day you go to the gym, go to the gym every day and do some squats. And they modified the intensity and some days were heavy, some days were light. And all these people were commenting on, how strong their squat was getting and how much leg, you know, muscles they were building, all that other stuff. Same principle. It's that mm -hmm. that frequency of practice that really starts to generate uh, just tremendous uh, skill acquisition and strength gains, especially if it's not if it's something you're not used to doing. Now, if you're doing all of that and you're still struggling with your with your pull up game, um, then you could look at you know correctional exercise. You could look at you know, modifying and changing exercises, like a great exercise for somebody to graduate towards a pull-up would be like a body row. So for somebody who just doesn't have the strength, and, and I, I don't even think they, they should do a, a lap pull-down, I'll have them do a body row. And a body row is just you take a barbell and you put it on a rack and mm -hmm. you kind of walk underneath it. So you're it's almost like an upside-down push-up. And then I'd have them pull their body. And as they get stronger, I increase the resistance and then move them to a pull-down. Well, I like... I like the um, the rubber bands for that, you know, that, that one point of the lift where you get the most, uh, like you need the most help. It, it really helps to apply it at the right point of the lift where, you know, the strength curve, you're not quite as strong in. And so I, I like to take like a long enough rubber band so it'll, 
it'll give you just enough just to give you that, uh, you know, push uh, to get, you know, the rest of you kind of helping mm-hmm. to push you back up. But using that for a while until you, you, you try it without it, after you've done enough practice and you've gone through enough reps of it, you really do feel that strength come. Mm. What's the most pull-ups you guys have ever done in your life? Mm. 20-something. Yeah. I would, yeah, it was probably around 20 something. I was a lot lighter back then, too. Yeah, I don't even remember if I've ever actually made a, a real effort. There was a time there where I, I used to I used to start every back workout with uh, 50 pull ups. That was just like however many it took you to hit 50, how many sets? Yeah, so and, and that's the old Arnold workout. Yeah, well, and that's what worked me up to getting 20 something. And so yeah. I don't remember. It wasn't like I'm my goal was to how many can I get in a row? It was like, hey, I got to do 50 before I start my back workout. And so, so you just do however many sets it takes mm-hmm. to get to 50. Mm-hmm. I would do more dips than I did uh, pull ups, was always a, a struggle for mm-hmm. me. So I'm at one point, I made it a goal to be able to hit 30 pull ups, and it took me about a year. Mm. Uh, and then I got to the point where I could do 30 and then it was how much load I could put on my body to do a single. And yeah, I once I started to it. get like chains and add weight to it, that really helped. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the funny thing with pull-ups is, uh, for me, my back's always been a strength in terms of my strength for my back, but my lats always lagged behind my mid back. Um, and so, uh, and I did pull downs and all that stuff. But when I did pull-ups for that year, my lats just blew up. It was like the most effective thing I ever did for my lats. Great exercise. <laughs> Next question is from Wade Stark. How important is hydration? Are the gallon jugs at the gym really necessary, or should you just drink when you're thirsty? This is a good question because I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of controversy here, or there's several camps when it comes to this. Yeah, mm. there's the whole drink shit tons of water camp. Uh, there's the other camp that says you're fine if you just drink when you're thirsty. I think the well, there's even the camp that we've talked to people that think it's. Uh, ideal to go without water sometimes. Yeah, water fast. Mm-hmm. It, technically, that I mean, evolutionarily speaking, it kind of makes sense. I mean, we we always humans were always around water. We don't last very long without water, but I'm pretty sure we didn't carry it with us all the time. Um, so it kind of makes sense that humans would consume water in large intervals. You know what I'm saying? So like, oh, I'm near water. I'm going to drink a lot. Now I'm going to go hunt and do all the stuff. This really depends on who I'm talking to. Like. <clears throat> If I'm t- first of all, the jug in the gym thing is really not necessary because that's kind of like one of those things where uh, I feel like I think it's like wearing atomic shoes. Like, hey, I'm a lifter. Here's my jug of water. Totally, yeah. no, 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 totally. It's that. It's it makes a lot of sense for a competitor. I mean, I for sure carry my my gallon of water around um, and measuring my water intake and manipulating that into a show. Uh, is extremely important to the way I present my physique on stage. Uh, that is the main reason for it. So, like anything else, like when you're if if we think of weightlifting and bodybuilding as as a, a sport, uh, when you see people that surf or play basketball or play tennis, there's certain things at the professional level that these these guys or girls are doing that you know because I, I, all of us that are weekend warriors, we want to feel like a professional, and so we do the same thing too. It's mm-hmm. kind of like one of those things that have become trendy that. Oh, I lift weights and I care about sculpting my body, so I'm kind of a bodybuilder too. So I need to carry my jug of water. It's yeah. like, no, it doesn't really do much for you unless you're competing on stage. Well, because uh, you're really trying to manipulate how you look uh, at a particular moment and, and how it right. affects you. Now, but- I've also given that to some clients that I know really struggle with getting to their water intake. So if I've got a client who just can't even get a half a gallon done and I have so I have them drink carrying a half gallon or a gallon around so they can see it and and actually and I say always drink your water from here I've used it as a tool like that though so you know I, I don't I I'm, I'm not a fan of knocking somebody who is carrying a jug around because we don't know why they're carrying the jug around we I mean you may be able to assume that they're not a competitor by the way they look but you don't know if they have had a trainer like someone like me who said hey you don't drink enough water. You you think you do. Let's figure that out. Let's mm-hmm. carry something around that is already measured out for you, and then let's pay attention to what you drink on a daily basis. And more often than not, I find people uh, under consuming, not getting a lot of water. We're we have, you know, so many other fluids that people tend to drink besides water, uh, and a lot of those are full of sugar and crap. That's where I see the biggest benefit is when, uh, you know, when I would work with people, it was, it it wasn't so much that they weren't, that they needed to drink more water. Mm. It was that when they drank more water, they drank less, you know, uh, soda, less juices, less coffees, less teas. Um, and it, 
turned out to be better, right? Because they're drinking less of this other garbage. Yeah. Um, your your pee is actually a pretty good uh, indicator of whether or not you're getting enough water. It really is. If mm-hmm. it's uh, if it tastes salty, just kidding. Yeah, it's a joke. It's, it's if it's <laughs> if it's clear, if your if your urine is clear, you're drinking too much. Drinking too much water is not good for you either. Um, I mean, at, at extreme levels, drinking too much water, your cells will actually drown. Mm. But even if you just drink a little bit too much water, it throws off your electrolyte imbalance, and you right. can start to notice things like heart palpitations and anxieties and digest, digest, uh, digestive issues Sorry, um, from drinking too much. So look at your urine. If your urine is clear, back off a little bit. You don't need to pound so much damn water. Um, if your urine is kind of a dark yellow... You definitely need more, and really the color you're looking for is kind of a clear yellow, and that will tell you right there if you're drinking enough water. The big thing, though, is- Golden yellow. The the, other, the big thing is that people just, they drink a lot of other shit. It's funny when you ask people you know, if, to start tracking what they're drinking, people will go a whole day without having a glass of actual water. Right. It's like, oh, I had two coffees in the morning, then with my lunch I had- this you know juice or this diet soda then later on with you know with dinner i had some wine and then after dinner i had some tea before bed and what you realize is there's like okay you have everything you drink is flavored dude it's amazing it's amazing i still run into people like this that just don't drink water at all like they'll drink diet cokes they'll drink coffee they'll drink all these things and not even like they just they can't stand that it doesn't have flavor it's weird i'm just like well, what are you talking about like the feeling you get when you're properly hydrated is like for me i know like if i if i'm not drinking water i'll i'll start to feel tightness i'll start to feel like you know my my tissues like really tensing up i'll get headache like like certain things will happen where i'm like wow i am dehydrated i i know like i need to to introduce more water and get rid of all this like excess shit that you know i've been drinking Um, and I just, I, I think it's, it's a lot like when you, you know, you have a poor diet and you just, you don't know what it feels like to be on the other side of the fence. It's weird. It's weird because you're, you do your, your brain does adapt to the things that you consume. And if everything you consume is flavored, your, your brain will adapt to that, to find things that are not flavored, to be extremely bland because you're not getting this pleasure effect from the things that you're consuming. and But it really is, it's extremely strange. It's as strange as, imagine if someone said to you, I don't like the way air smells. I like to smell uh, <laughs> Glade all the time. I have to smell smells all the time. Otherwise, yeah. I'm just bored. It's literally the same thing. Like, oh, I don't, I don't, I've had people tell me that. <laughs> I don't like water. I, I, and it doesn't taste like anything. I don't like the taste of water. Yeah. It blows my mind. What do you mean you don't like the fucking taste of water? It's not supposed to have a taste no, it's you're just, just supposed to drink. It feels because good to drink water. Yeah. That's it. So, I mean, here's a here's something that'll for a lot of people this will help you uh, drink the right amount of water. Don't drink anything but water. Right. Try that, um, and again, you know, drink when you're thirsty. Look at your urine. For most people, I think those are the three. Th- that's it. You just got to kind of focus on I, that. I think it's important though to say that I think most people are under drinking water. The same way I feel about protein. It's there is there's a very small population of people that I think are over consuming protein because they're having the shakes, the bars and all the all the shit and they've been fed the bodybuilding bullshit. It, I think there's a small percentage. I think the most <clears throat> average people and clients that I always had, I always had to teach them to introduce more protein in their diet. And when I taught them to start eating more protein, like the water thing, guess what happened? They stopped eating so much of the sugar and, yeah. the, and the bad carbs and the processed starchy shit. Like Replacing. This. They replaced that with healthy protein. So I think for the most part, most people should make a conscious effort to drink more water. The likelihood of you drinking too much to where it's bad for you, you have to really overdo it to do that. I mean, the the, the few examples we've had of people drowning themselves from oh, too well, much water. Oh, that was like, like a, a challenge. Contest, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, exactly. It's, it's always from some shit like that. Like, how many gallons can you drink in one hour? It's like, no, you just need to be conscious enough to be drinking more water. And I'm, and if that means it's easier for you to track it and pay attention to it because you carry a jug, I'm okay with that. I know we, we, we've we talked, or you guys have talked shit about it before, but uh, I, I subscribe to that group of people that if I'm not paying attention to it, I'm more likely to under-consume than when I am paying attention mm-hmm. to it. Next question is from Brooke Popel. 
I have digestive issues and have done a lot of research on the food industry and know most restaurants serve hydrogenated oils and terribly sourced foods. My question is, how can I go to a restaurant and enjoy my meal knowing the food isn't ideal and could cause a lot of inflammation? This is a, a this is a good question yeah. for the fitness fanatics uh, that are listening uh, to the podcast right now. You, when you look at your health, you want to look at your health as this total sphere of, of all these different factors that contribute to whether or not you're healthy. And it's not just your physical health. And she's referring to her physical health, right? Inflammation. Um, the food is, you know, it's got hydrogenated oils in it. It's terribly sourced. Not going to be good for my physical body. Perfectly fine and, and true. This is absolutely true. But food offers a lot more to you than just the physical benefits. Now, I, I will be honest, the physical benefits are most of uh, the things that you should pay attention to, to what food can provide you. But that you cannot negate all of the other things that food can provide you. One of them being the enjoyment of the taste of the food, the enjoyment of the people around you, the bonding with the people around you. Perhaps you're enjoying a particular you know, special moment. Maybe we're going out to dinner. Those things all also contribute to your health. I mean, on the extreme end, you could be a, a complete orthorexic, control your food down to the gram, be so scared of, of, of going outside, be so scared of plastics that your house is made out of you know, wood and glass and that you, you have to exercise. If you miss a workout, you lose your mind. That person is also sick. That person is also not healthy. Yes, they're, 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 they're so concerned about the physical aspects of their health that they're completely forgetting all the other aspects, which have also been shown to contribute to longevity and long health. You know, when they do studies on people who live a long time throughout the world, one of the things they find in common is these people have close social networks. Mm -hmm. They typically have a spiritual practice. Um, they have people around them that they connect with and they talk to, and they have they tend to enjoy certain things in their life. Sometimes that's a donut. Sometimes that's a meal that's not ideal for you. So you just have to weigh those things out. Now, it's a it's kind of a, a risk versus benefit. Like if I'm going to go to a restaurant with my girlfriend and we're going to enjoy each other and enjoy our company – and we're going to have pizza. Uh, pizza might not be the right food for me because for me personally, dairy, not only do I have digestive issues with it, but it's terrible digestive issues, which will completely ruin the good time I'm going to have with my girlfriend. So I may say instead, you know what? The pizza, just it, that messes me up so bad. I'm not even able to enjoy the, the date. Why don't we go have burgers? I'll get one without cheese. Still a food that's not ideal for me. I can enjoy the food. We're going to have a good time. But it's not so bad that it's going to destroy me and then destroy the whole date type of thing. So that's really what you got to weigh out because you, you don't want to – because I know Brooke we, – we all know who Brooke is. She's very fit, very lean. You don't want to get stuck in the, oh, my God, I'm going to gain a pound. Oh, my God, I'm not going to look as sharp tomorrow. This isn't perfectly healthy. This isn't organic. The sourcing isn't ideal. Um, and really the only negative you're going to feel from this is you might feel a little bit bloated. You might, you know, be a little gassy and that's it. But at the same time, you're enjoying yourself. You get to go out, you get to go off your structured routine that you're on 90% of the time. You're probably going to benefit more from that overall than you'll, than the negatives you may get from the fact that you ate off your diet. Mm. I, I struggle a lot with how we present information like this. And what I struggle with is... <clears throat> is the reality of that it's impossible for me to get away from all the chemicals all the things that uh, I potentially consume if I'm eating out uh, the, the bad light that can be on me at certain times the uh, avoidance of tech like mm. there's so many fucking 5G's coming right right there's so Check. many there's so many things that we talk about that there's now and because of the beautiful science we've done studies and research on fucking everything so there's something to talk about uh, how something is so bad for us, right? All these things that we're, we're talking about. For me, it's it's more about just being aware of it. And I, th I think you've already taken the, uh, the necessary steps to educate yourself on the potential negative effects that it could be having somebody like you who has already digestive issues. And then you going out, uh, all, obviously, you know, that's going to exaggerate that, right? So 
Um, I'm I'm going to be aware of that and I'm going to limit my exposure or limit the times to do it. Does that mean I'll never go to a restaurant and eat something like that because it, it may fuck my stomach up or may not make me feel bit good or the next day I, I'm bloated and I retain a bunch of water? Like, I don't know. It depends on how miserable that makes you feel uh, and what that scale looks like, kind of like what Sal said. Like if it's debilitating where you, you can't even enjoy the night or you're on the toilet all the next day. It's like, well, fuck, you probably shouldn't be doing that. Your body's screaming at you at that point. Mm-hmm. So I think we we just have to we have to weigh a lot of these things. Um, and I, I use my Diet Coke as reference, just and I'm sure everybody thinks I'm like addicted to it because I, I talk about it, but it's just an easy example for me of something that I allow to come in and out of my life. Um, you know, I just came off of another streak of where I was like starting to notice that I was starting to have it almost every day. And so we just went gro- we grocery shop every week. And so this week when we went grocery shopping and I tell Katrina, like no Diet Cokes, like all teas, all water, like that's all I want to drink. And so I just, I'm, a, I'm aware that I know that the things in the Diet Coke are not, and I get people that DM me afterwards. They're like, well, what's so bad about Diet Coke? There's all the research says you have to drink this. It's like, listen, it's not about how bad it is or I think it's going to kill me or it's going to shorten my life or I'm going to be miserable. It's that I know it's not ideal for my body. Just like eating out at a restaurant that has got terrible food and using these shitty oils, it's probably not ideal for my body. But at the same time, too, I'm not going to be such a fucking weirdo that I'm not going to go have something every once in a while because that's where everybody's going. I'm good. If I know I'm okay and it's not going to make my stomach awful and I'm be on the ter- on the toilet, but yet I know it's not ideal for my body... I'm probably going to just be normal and go and have that or enjoy that. And then also, but then also become aware of it. Like, oh, mm. I just had a, I ate out. Oh, I just had a Diet Coke today. Oh, I just did this. Like, okay, now I'm starting to string days together where I'm doing less than ideal things that I'm intaking. Now it's time for me to kind of cut back or be, be tighter on stuff just to create a better mm. balance for myself and take care of my body, flush it out, whatever, and reset. Yeah, I think it's, it's in, it's an interesting question because um, it, once you start to know more, like it, it, it kind of breeds more of this like paranoia uh, towards other things. And I think really like it's it's almost easier to just eliminate and then like I'm on the wagon, I'm off the wagon, I'm on the wagon, I'm off the wagon. Like I, I did good, I did bad. You know, it's a lot harder to, uh, you know, evaluate that and be flexible with it like real time where um, – I, I understand, yes, I might feel the, the you know, the impact of this um, immediately or I might I might find myself uh, in a situation where it's like a social setting and uh, like I know exactly what this is going to do to my body, but I'm going to I'm just I'm going to do little bits of it to be social and and. And, and trying to enjoy myself while I'm doing that. Mm-hmm. Like it's a hard thing to enjoy the moment of it when you know there's like impact towards it. But um, I, I found I found ways around that, I guess, like especially because now I know like gluten for me, I, uh, not, not that I'm, I'm like super sensitive to it, but I'm sensitive enough to where it's going to mess me up. I'm going to feel, um, you, you know, I'm going to feel this uh, this heartburn start to start to kind of take over and. And then I start to evaluate that because I know that there's a psychology there too. And I know Dr. Russi has talked about this on some level of where you get to a point where it's like, I'm, I'm nailing down this one thing, but now I'm starting to get paranoid that gluten's, oh my God, I just saw in the label or gluten's in this. And then I, I freak out and, and, you I, get and then I get heartburn. Yeah, right? And so it's like, it's this weird conundrum. You but, know, what's funny about this is the people that I've encountered that tend to freak out the most about, oh, no, I'm, I'm eating a food that I'm not supposed to eat or whatever. Are the least least likely to get really hurt from it as well, far as like how healthy they are outside of well, else. Well, I mean, there's that too. But yeah. it, what I was going to say is that these people who tend to freak out the most about it aren't freaking out because they want to be really healthy. They freaking out because they don't want to gain any body fat they or not look, look. Yeah, they, they want to look because I'll, I'll I'll tell you what I've hung out with a lot of people. That's like what this. I mean. They're least likely to take on the damage from it. Right? I've like I've hung out with a lot of people like this, and it's funny because they'll be like, "No, I can't eat that. It's not this. It's not that." Then we'll go out and party, and they won't drink because no, I can't have alcohol. But they'll do drugs because they're, yeah. they're because they're calorie free. <laughs> right. So it's like I can do all these drugs. It's not going to make me fat, but I'm not going to have any alcohol because you know alcohol's got calories. And it's like it's funny because it's driven by this physical insecurity about I need to look a particular way, um, and it's it you know just kind of pointing that out. I mean, I was kind of like that where what got me to eat a particular I would I I couldn't miss a workout. 
I couldn't eat a particular way. I had to have protein bars on me because God forbid I went two hours uh, longer than two hours without protein, you know, I would lose muscle. Um, you're not enjoying things. Uh, you're not enjoying your life that way. Not only that, but you're you're not improving your 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 longevity. You're not healthier as a result of that. It's actually a sign of of dysfunction. So you got to kind of weigh those things out. Remember, life is about a lot of different things, and health is a lot about a lot of different things. Some of those things have to do with improving your physical health. Some of them have to do with improving your mental health or your spiritual health or the health of the relationships around you. And all of those things make up that sphere of total health. And if neglecting any one of those things is going to detrimentally affect your health. So it's just like somebody who's got great relationships and great spiritual practice, but they eat donuts every single day and they don't exercise. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's no different than that, except it's the reverse. You do all the physical stuff, but you... You know, you cannot go out. You simply cannot hang out with people because yeah, you just become antisocial. Can't bring your food with you. You know, if yeah. I don't have my food with me, forget it. I'm not going to go out to dinner. That's also a sign of poor health. Yeah, it's a practice. Next question is from Miss Audrey Lynn. Can you develop food intolerances from eating something too much? Can you develop one from not eating something enough? What should you do when you develop several food intolerances? This is a this is a great question. So, <sighs> absolutely, you can get it from eating too much. In fact, that's probably what most likely happens for yeah, most people. Yeah, and it's not it's not that the eating it too much is what caused the you're food just intolerance. Just increasing your you're cre- increasing your chances with that food. Yeah. So if you have <laughs> if you're in a state of inflammation, uh, so let's say you have mild gut inflammation, the what happens when your gut is inflamed is that food particles uh, or proteins travel through the gut when they're not supposed to and get into your bloodstream. Because your gut is this intelligent, permeable barrier between you and the outside world. So remember, when you swallow something, it really doesn't go inside your body. It's inside of a tube that's within your body. It doesn't go inside your body until it's allowed to permeate through the gut and absorb through the intestines in the gut. Uh, And again, this is an intelligent process. If the gut is inflamed... Food particles or protein particles are going to move through the gut when they're not supposed to into the bloodstream. And what your body does when, it, when, when this happens is it identifies these particles as foreign invaders and it mounts an immune response and you start to develop antibodies. And these antibodies are part of the intolerance uh, process. Now, there's a lot of things that can cause a food intolerance, but this is one of them. So let's say I eat lots and lots of eggs all the time, eggs, 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 and I'm doing this in the presence of inflammation in my gut. My body starts to produce these antibodies to eggs. Now when I start to eat eggs, I get a mild immune reaction. Not a food allergy, so I'm not getting anaphylactic shock or anything like that, but I am getting kind of this reaction to the eggs where I get more inflammation, I might get uh, you know stiffness, I might get pain, I might get digestive issues. It might cause so much inflammation in my gut that it throws off my microbiome, which then causes more problems down the line. So eating too much in that context can definitely develop a food intolerance. Now, the second part is, can you develop one from not eating something enough? This is an interesting one now because I do think that there may be cases for... We talked about this with the introducing kids to peanut butter early on. Yeah, mm. I, I think that the... the and, and, by, and I don't we're not recommending that, by the way. This is just some interesting research now that's coming out that is showing that um, when kids are exposed to more in different foods that that exposure prevents this really crazy um, immune response that can sometimes happen. Um, I don't recommend it if you have a kid with allergies, food allergies, because this could cause big problems. This is just some of the res- some of the research that I'm reading. I've also experienced with clients where, let's say we've identified they have a food intolerance or something, let's say it's gluten, um, and then they'll avoid gluten completely. Then when they, every once in a while have gluten, they get a crazy response, yeah. like way more than they had before. Mm-hmm. And so we talked about this with Ruscio. Uh, there may be a, a case for s- reducing the intake of a food intolerance, but not eliminating it, because the elimination may may actually make you more sensitive. Like what happens with with the research that's showing with with food allergies. Um, I'm not quite sure if this is a good strategy or not. I'm experimenting a little bit with myself. Well, I'll sprinkle in a little bit here and there, and I think it seems to be working. But this is newer research. What the tra- what they're saying traditionally, what, what functional medicine doctors have said for a long time around food intolerances is to avoid them. So if you're really intolerant to food, just avoid it completely. Do an elimination diet. Take it out of your diet. Maybe later on in the future, you can reintroduce it and see if it works. But because of the effects that that food has on you, 
you're better off not having it because that inflammatory response is a stress response and now it's not good for you if if it's a inflamed gut that allow that allows these foods to permeate through the gut and get into the bloodstream and then cause an intolerance or an auto or an immune response if that's what causes it what are the most common things that cause an inflamed gut is it stress is it overconsumption of food like what are what are the most uh, common uh, you know things that will that will cause the gut to Boy, become inflamed. Th- that's a good question. Your mm. your your gut is your second brain, um, and so it's got a ton of serotonin receptors. It produces a lot of neurotransmitters. Um, when you feel things, you tend to feel them uh, in your gut. So, like if you get anxious, nervous, you fall in love, uh, you'll start to feel things in your gut. It reacts to how you think. So, stress and thoughts probably can definitely affect. Gut inflammation. So I would, well, yeah, I was wondering if you were to do that, apply that method where you have like the smaller amounts of the, you know, that uh, uh, the particular problem food, um, to be in more of a parasympathetic state and making that like the intention of like I'm really like relaxed as I'm going through this. Well, process. one strategy is is this. Here's it. Take it even a step further. One strategy would be to have somebody that you're working with slip it in your food every once in a while without you knowing. Mm. Because uh, and my belief is that once you've developed that psychological association with the right. food, you're, yeah, already, you're totally. already unaware. Yeah, and in fact, they did a study like that. They took a bunch of people who said they were in, in, intolerant to gluten and they, they did a double you know, placebo-controlled study where they gave uh, them placebo pills or pills with you know, wheat and gluten. And they found that a great deal of them did not have any intolerance whatsoever. They thought they did. So every time they ate something that they that they knew had gluten, they'd get this reaction. Right. And this is where people like Elaine Norton will come in and like hammer people for saying that they're gluten intolerant, you know. Or that they're not or whatever. Yeah, or whatever, but, which I get that too. But there is definitely, even for myself, I notice a psychological effect, like I mentioned earlier, that uh, if I know like just, you know, there's traces or, or there's like, like it, it'll, it'll cause a reaction just based off my own, uh, you know, thought process. Yeah. Out. So my, my theory for myself is that, so the things that's, tend to give me a reaction more than else is if I if I mess with ice cream or candy anymore uh, and then third would be like would be gluten and I noticed that with like burger buns and things like that is where I, I noticed this and when I think back at, to my own personal eating habits and patterns of those types of foods like if there was ever a thing that I gorged on or eat a lot of it's like the burger and fries and like mm. over consuming that and then if I am to eat ice cream I always piled ice cream on top of whatever my day I have dinner yeah. that I so eat. super stuffed anyway right yeah. I'm already super You're stuffed anyway. and then I still I'm mm-hmm. watching a movie or something and I'm stuffing my face with ice cream yeah. so when totally. I so for me I think like that is most likely I over consume so I'm already stressing the gut as it's already from too much food mm-hmm. and then on top of that the foods that I'm choosing to pile on top of that no is, doubt is what I've probably, noticed that too and especially with the burger thing like with the buns like just eating it too like I I used to like like just shovel it in, you know, like you'd eat it really quickly, uh, which then would stress, you know, stress everything out too on top of that. So like I would get that response uh, as a result of just that. Yeah. Um, stuffing your face and eating beyond a, a certain level of, of fullness or satiety definitely can cause problems with the gut. And the problem again is this hyper palatable food. If you're, if you have a limit by which your, your body will tell you like you don't want to have any more food, let's say that limits a 10 eating processed foods will make it a 20. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of whatever meal you had where you were stuffed, if I told you to continue eating what you had just finished eating, you'd probably be like, nah, man, I don't want anymore. Like I'm stuffed. I can't eat any more steak. Right. I can't eat. I'm just too full. Then they bring out ice cream because it's a different food, because it's hitting different, you know, palate, you know, palatability sensors. All of a sudden you're like, I know I'm stuffed, but I know I can eat more ice cream. And now you've just hijacked it and stuffed yourself even more. Yeah. That will, I mean, you can upset your stomach with healthy food just by eating too much. Well, mm-hmm. and, I, and I think that mm-hmm. that's a, you're giving a good extreme analogy to that, but I think there's a whole spectrum there that yeah. people don't even realize. It's like, oh, I'm, am I full? I'm pretty full. I feel good, you know? And hey, then, do you feel eh. like this? Right. And then dessert comes out and it's like, oh, I definitely can have that. You know, it's like how much, how much were you already over consuming in that sitting, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I would say stress. Uh, I would say over consuming definitely, uh, foods that are heavily processed because they encourage the overconsumption. They tend to be low in fiber, uh, which really doesn't feed the microbiome very well. 
Um, I would say eating a lot of foods that you're intolerant to probably causes uh, a lot of inflammation. Alcohol, uh, not a good one uh, either. And then just just gut microbiome dysbiosis. I mean, our, our, our guts, our microbiomes are so off for a multitude of different reasons. Artificial sweeteners don't seem to be too good for them. Um, you know, for the microbiome, neither do foods that have glyphosate residues. Glyphosates tend to be have this kind of kill, you know, bacteria effect in the gut. And so once you, th- and here's the thing: once things get thrown off really bad, um, it's you got to get back on track. You have to be much more strict to get back back on track than you do to stay on track. If that makes any sense. So like, mm-hmm. if you're in a position where you're just your gut's fucked, like well, I don't know why my gut, I'm bloated throughout the day. I can't digest foods like I normally can. You're probably going to have to be pretty strict for a while before you can get to the point where you throw things in here and there. That was me. I mean, it, it, w- it was a year for me. It took me an entire year of being ultra strict with my food, of sitting down when I ate, of managing my stress when I ate, of eating the right foods and not eating certain foods, of eating the right amount of fiber. I used high CBD cannabis. That was part of my, my strategy as well. That helped me quite a bit with the inflammation. And I had to do that for a year. Like If I went off just by a little bit, like by the tiniest bit, it would fuck me up. So I did a whole year of that. And then I noticed after a year, I was able to every once in a while throw things in. And now we're talking years later. I mean, I just had dinner at my mom's house and I ate a massive bowl of you know gluten packed pasta. And yeah, sure. Afterwards, I felt a little bloated or whatever, but I was fine. Woke up this morning, had a normal you know poop and felt okay. Whereas you know while I was going through that whole process of fixing my gut, that would have debilitated me for for a week. It would have been a terrible uh, yeah. experience. So look, if you go to mindpumpfree.com, you can download our free fitness guides. We have guides that teach you how to get leaner. We have guides that teach you how to develop particular areas of your body, like your arms, your legs, your midsection, your glutes. We have guides teaching you how to be a more successful personal trainer. I mean, we've got a ton there, mindpumpfree.com. Also, if you want to learn more about your favorite Mind Pump hosts, you can find our individual social media pages on Instagram. Uh, you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find my page at Mind Pump Sal, and you can find Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.